This time on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan travels to the Turks and Caicos to learn how marine biologists conduct underwater research. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. It's the middle of the night on the tropical island of South Caicos. A group of marine biology students are wading into a mangrove helping to tag baby sharks. How I got here is an interesting story. I get a lot of emails asking me about becoming a marine biologist. It may come as a surprise to you, but I'm not a marine biologist, so I think it would be really fun to check out some of the ways that marine biology students learn to do field work. I'm off to the sunny but remote island of South Caicos in the Turks and Caicos Islands, just southeast of the Bahamas. Here, the School for Field Studies operates a field research facility where college students from all over the United States come for some hands-on marine biology field work. Faculty at the School for Field Studies have ongoing research projects investigating fisheries management, reef health, shark populations, and even human impact. My goal? To spend some time tagging along with the students to see what they do every day in their pursuit of a degree in marine biology. My day begins with the shark research team led by Professor Aaron Henderson. Henderson and his students are investigating how the marine protected areas around South Caicos are affecting the shark population. Their first task for the day is to deploy some baited camera rigs. These rigs will hopefully attract and film several species of sharks. The goal? To learn how many and what species of sharks are here in the marine protected area. Many different species visit the cameras, including nurse sharks, Caribbean reef sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks, and even great hammerheads. Next, the team deploys what are known as drum lines. These are baited hooks attached to a float and a weight. They're designed so that sharks can swim around when they're caught so they won't drown. The goal is to catch sharks so they can be tagged and released. With five drum lines set, the team goes back to the first one and checks for a shark. The goal is to check each line at least every 10 to 15 minutes so a shark doesn't stay hooked too long. Oh, there's something, there's something. He's looking straight up at the boat. Okay, let the line out as quick as you can, Alyssa. It doesn't take long before they have their first shark. Dr. Henderson places a tag on its dorsal fin while the students take a small tissue sample from its tail for an isotope analysis of the shark's diet. While the shark team is out tagging sharks, another team of students is heading out to sea as well. This group is studying the fish populations of the island, again trying to determine the effectiveness of marine protected areas. Instead of working from the boat, these students will be doing their research with scuba gear. The divers ready? Right hand on your mask and rag, left hand on any dangly bits. We've got three divers going in in three, two, one, roll. Underwater, the team heads to a nice section of coral reef and begins a transect. Essentially, they reel out a very long tape measure over the reef, which defines a specific path of a specific length. Of course, swimming over the reef causes all the fish to swim away and hide. So they wait a few minutes for the fish to go back to their normal routine. Then they slowly swim along the transect, taking notes on what species of fish they see and keeping count. Of course, they don't see every fish. This lionfish hiding in a hole escaped detection. But this technique yields a pretty good estimate of fish numbers on this section of reef. By comparing the transect results inside and outside of the marine protected areas, the students can learn not only how well the marine protected areas are working, but on which species. 
Of course, fishing pressure is what affects fish populations, so it makes sense to also try to get a handle on what species of fish are being caught. The students work with the local fishermen who volunteer to allow the students to come down to the docks at the end of the day and see what kind of fish they're catching and how big they are. Another team of students, another research project. This team is working in snorkel depths without scuba, studying a big snail called a conch. The conch is one of the most popular seafoods in the Caribbean, and a whopping 10% of the world's supply comes from the tiny island of South Caicos, so it's an important resource. The conch population seems to be dropping, so the conch research team urgently needs data. This transect in the seagrass bed is being used to count conch, but their work doesn't end there. They also collect a few conch for additional research on land. Back at the shore, alongside a representative from the Turks and Caicos Department of Environment and Maritime Affairs, the students crack the conch open in the traditional way. Student Daniel Liu is trying to come up with a way to determine the size of the shell when the shell is gone. It is 44.9. Fishermen often take the meat out of the shell at sea and return with only the meat and no shell. How can the government recommend or enforce size regulations if there's no shell to measure? So Daniel's research is looking at other ways to gauge the maturity of a conch without a shell. As the sun sets and the air cools down, my day following the students isn't over. I've rejoined with the shark team to follow along on their night work. Baby sharks live in the mangroves, where they're safe from a lot of larger predators. A couple of nights a week... Okay guys, come on over, let's get the net out there. Dr. Henderson and his students head over to the mangrove areas to catch baby sharks. They start by setting a net in the chest-deep water, hoping to snare small sharks as they cruise by. Every 15 minutes, they check the net, and when they have a shark, they bring it back to a makeshift lab on shore, where they weigh it, tag it with an electronic tag, take a small tissue sample, some ID photos, and then quickly get it back into the water. One of the students will swim the baby shark around for a few minutes to re-oxygenate its gills. Then they send it on its way. From sharks to fish to conch, my day with the marine biology students at the School for Field Studies in South Caicos was exhausting, but exciting. I saw how marine biology can be conducted from shore, from a boat, and underwater using scuba or snorkeling. Sometimes we imagine marine biologists as having glamorous jobs working with marine mammals or exciting jobs diving with sharks. But marine biology is a broad spectrum of ocean-related studies with specialists in everything from plankton growth to whale rescues and everything in between. Sometimes it's pretty exciting. Sometimes it's not very glamorous. But if you love the ocean and the life in the ocean, marine biology is a job that will never be boring.